Uh, hi people, my name is Wegen Bukirigen as always. Um, yeah, as Heather suggests, I'm briefly going to discuss astrology and the length of life, something that I haven't covered yet. Not in a separate video at least. This is going to be a really, really quick video, so no worries. Um, anyways, let's get into it. Yeah, um, I'm going to use as always my own natal chart as an example. Um, generally speaking, the um, astrological aspects that deal with um, the length of someone's life is the first house. The first house deals with uh, roughly estimated the first 30 years of your life, 25 to 30 years. So from birth all the way into adolescence or young adulthood. Uh, that's the house that Aries rules, rules over. The seventh house deals with the exact opposite, the last 30 years of someone's life. Uh, but bear in mind that this, generally speaking, the latter, generally speaking, applies to primarily to orary astrology and only if the question is age-based. So if you're wondering when you're going to die or something like that, then yeah, the seventh house represents old age, essentially the last 25 to 30 years of your life before you die. So if you die at 100, then essentially be roughly estimated between 75 all the way up to, to 100, so when you die. Um, and I'm also going to briefly discuss other miscellaneous things. The 12th house um, deals with primarily with past events. Uh, that's why people that have a, that's ruled by Pisces, obviously. The 7th house is ruled by Libra. The house that rules, that Pisces rules over, so Pisces' is house, <coughs> sorry, Pisces' is house, the 12th house, uh, generally speaking, deals with, um, other than the, the default things that it deals with, uh, institutionalization or um, incarceration, working behind the scenes, hiding behind the scenes, it just goes on. Generally speaking, a clandestine, all things of a clandestine or hidden nature, all things that are obscure, so obscurity. Um, other than that, it also deals with, um, it deals with, uh, with uh, the past essentially. Uh, and uh, past thoughts and events, specifically negatively, generally speaking. Uh, people that generally speaking have a strong, that's why people that generally speaking have a strong Piscean influence. These people have good memories in general. It depends on the individual, but generally speaking, they have good memories. They can remember stuff essentially almost right after they're born. Uh, but usually it's not positive. It's meant in a really, really negative way. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. For example, with me, um, I have Neptune and Capricorn, which is afflicted in the 12th house. Uh, generally speaking, this stands for neurosis and delusions and whatnot, blah, 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 blah. Uh, The former, I still deal with up to present day, but it's not an issue really. Uh, I've already explained that in the past. Essentially, the more pressure I exert on myself uh, spiritually, magically, esoterically, uh, occult wise uh, my neurosis also has a tendency to increase as i um, as i ascend further so the more pressure i put on myself the more pressure i put on my negative traits as well and all my other negative traits are all but gone essentially are all gone essentially but um, with the exception of neurosis and with neurosis it's more of a karmic thing okay uh, you get what you deserve essentially so the more pressure I put on myself, um, the more my neurosis also skyrockets. And I notice that when I have, for example, like a brief neuro neurotic fit, um, I have like a, a fit of anger or a fit of rage, neurotic rage. It automatically, not only is it associated with the past, it's always associated with the past, never with the future or with the present. Um, it always has to do with the past. It doesn't matter whether it's, uh, you know, re a really long time ago or whether it is recent. But generally speaking, 9 out of 10 times, it's a really long time ago. Stuff from 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 20 years ago, all of a sudden pops up into my head. And it's almost always because it's afflicted, the placement is afflicted, it's always negative. So it's not any kind of neuros neurosis. It's not like, hey, I remember something great as in, ah, oh, pleasant memories, etc. No, no, no. It's almost always something negative of, me thinking about an enemy, someone I despise, someone that, for example, took advantage of me when I was in a weakened position, blah, 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 <coughs> in that context. Um, yeah, and that's essentially it. Someone, for example, that has Jupiter in, in, in Pisces' house, uh, Jupiter rules over Pisces. Jupiter is the traditional ruler, so someone like that will also have, um, a, someone like that will have a great memory. With me, it's, again, it's Neptune here. Yeah, you need to have a considerable influence. I wouldn't label myself as having a great memory. I have a good memory, but not a great memory. Um, 
But for example, Jupiter here, being in the house that it rolls over, yeah, people like that, generally speaking, have a great memory, but only when it comes to things relating to the past. Uh, and uh, if Jupiter is afflicted, their minds are scattered, so they're like all over the place when it comes to uh, quote unquote archiving memories. That's the best way to describe it. Pisces deals with archived uh, memories. Don't confuse the two. Mercury deals with your thought processes on a day to day basis as well as overall. So your thinking capabilities essentially, or your playing capability. Whereas Jupiter uh, and Pisces as a whole, uh, the zodiac sign that it rolls over, specifically Pisces as a zodiac sign, deals with storing memories essentially. Things that are essentially a pastime, things that have already passed in life and happened a, a good while ago. In any case, things that you can officially classify as the past. Um, and let me see, what else uh, that I have to cover? Well, last but not least, by that logic, you could also say that Mercury deals with um, the future, essentially. Thinking about the future and the present, which is correct. Like I said, Mercury deals with your thinking capability, your thinking capacity. So it not only deals with what you're presently dealing with or what you have to deal with in life overall, it also deals with the future that can potentially become something, can become a reality. Okay, so people with like really strong Mercuries essentially, people that for example have naturally strong Mercuries like Gem in Gemini or in Virgo, these are people that generally speaking, <coughs> they can, they're well coordinated. Specifically with Gemini, it's... Um, dealing with things on a day-to-day -day basis. They're really good at that, commuting, dealing with paperwork, all of that stuff. Everything on a day-to-day -day basis, they can easily cover all of it. And with Virgo, it's, uh, or Virgo, it's, um, it's dealing with, with selectiveness, okay? Specifically, that's why the 12th house opposes the 6th house. This is Virgo's house. Um, specifically deals with essentially planning, being selective, having a good deal of criteria, all of which considerably helps shape the future. And yeah. So yeah, in that context, yeah, Mercury deals with um, the present and the future, essentially thinking about the present and the future. Okay, Jupiter's house, the 12th house, deals purely with, um, in that context, when it comes to line of thought, it deals with the archival process of thoughts, essentially. Things that already happened to you, like I said, it stores that away. So yeah, if you want to like consult a really, something that happened a really long time ago, yeah, you need to metaphorically speaking consult Jupiter. So yeah, that's it in any case, okay? So summarize, first house deals with the first part of your life, seventh house deals with the last part of your life, the twelfth house deals with um, the past, essentially, specifically thinking about the past, and the sixth house deals with the present, the sixth and the third house deal with the present and the potential future. Uh, that's all. Bye, people. Until next time.